Well, good morning. My name is Joyce Wood. I am Emeritus Professor of History at Anderson University, and I've been asked to discuss some aspects of diversity in the history of this university. I had the privilege of preparing a centennial collection of photographs and history when we celebrated that important occasion and have drawn from that resource. I was first asked to talk a little bit about the history of diversity at Anderson University. We must begin with something most people forget about easily, that it started as a diverse challenge, a school for girls. For many, many years it was not considered necessary to educate girls, but particularly in the emphasis in the Protestant Reformation that everyone needed to read and write, which is a, a major change, historical change as well. Uh, this included girls, and so the people who settled this area of uh, the Southeast felt it very, very important to found schools for girls, and you see a number established, such as Anderson College. However, that school closed during the Civil War. The beginning of the 20th century, in 1910, the local community leaders said, we need another school, and that led to the founding of Anderson College. As a school for girls then, it was a four-year baccalaureate institution. Uh, in the 1920s, it ran into significant financial problems, and at that point was the first to employ a female president in Dr. Annie Dove Denmark, uh, the first head of an institution of higher learning in South Carolina and she served in that position for 25 years, providing employment for many educated women in the process. The first international students to attend Anderson College, as far as I can tell from the research I did, began with a young lady from Japan named Tomeko Uno with honorific San. She came to Anderson College because an Anderson College graduate, Myra Anderson, went to teach in a girls' school in Hiroshima, Japan. One of the things missionaries did wherever they went around the world was found schools, especially schools for girls. And she found this capable young lady who came back to Anderson with her and attended Anderson College. And apparently uh, was so popular among the student body that she was given that recognition in the 1930 annual. But 1930 was the year in which Anderson College shifted from a four-year baccalaureate status to a two-year junior college, so she went on to Scarrett College in Tennessee to finish her education. But an international students later uh, attended the school. There's a wonderful photograph from 1967 showing a group from the International Complement on Campus, a young man from Syria, another young man from Korea, and a young lady from India. So very early we see international presence, and this became even stronger over the years in the, some of the sports competitions. For example, we started with soccer, with students from Bermuda, and then of course the tennis team uh, incorporated students from as far as Pakistan. So we see diversity developing on campus in the international arena. African-American students uh, started attending Anderson College in 1967. And that was the era of civil rights and a great deal of change. And the Anderson administration worked with the local high school, Westside High School, the principal, Bowen Wakefield, and arranged for three students in 1967 to attend the college, and those numbers increased in subsequent years. Among the first were Mac Nance and his cousin Horace Klinkscales. And Mac Nance was also a member of the basketball team. Both completed their Associate of Arts degree in 1968 and moved on. But when we look at the annuals and the photographs from that time period, we see the students incorporated in all of the campus activities. For example, 
in the uh, chapel photograph from the uh, 1968 yearbook, we see in the group one of the African-American students stuffed in like all the other students in that very small auditorium. If anyone's been in Merritt Auditorium, you can imagine how full it was. Um, students were required to attend every day. Classes ran from Monday through Saturday. Additional uh, participation we've mentioned on the sports teams was another interesting photograph taken of a, class, a group of students, a class of students going to Washington, D.C. in 1978 that the uh, students were all sitting on the Capitol steps with uh, South Carolina's famous Senator Strom Thurmond. By the 1970s, we are seeing the first members of African American community in the staff. They had long been part of uh, maintenance and housekeeping and other services on campus. But now they're becoming part of administration, such as Sheba Wortherly, who became director of student activities in 1977, and in 1984, the first African American professor. Wander Staggers, who filled the position of Assistant Professor of Computer Science and had the very important task of taking very nervous and concerned students and faculty into the new world of technology, particularly computers.